Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for, let's see, Thursday, the fourth day of February, 2021. I'm still writing 2020 now and then. I when I when I set this up, I sometimes I'll I I create the file name on the on the screen here, and I and, and last week I was still putting 2021. I have to go in and change it, and oh, you know, you think you think you know. No one would make that mistake after what 2020 was like, but, you know, I don't know what you do about that. Um, let's just quickly review before we draw the rune. Um, if you haven't been here before, well, we've, we've kind of shifted gears a little bit. And I'm just doing these on Mondays and Thursdays now instead of Monday through Thursday. And what I have been doing is writing, is writing down uh, and then talking a little bit about what Mondays reading was to see if there's some kind of continuation on Thursday or if we're shifting gears entirely. And on Monday, the, the basic uh, essence of that reading was balancing emotion and will uh, through spirit eloquence. We had Ansu's, which was the uh, rune, which again is Odin's rune and spirit eloquence, um, spirit communication and all of that. Uh, Laetitia was the geomancy rune, and so that's joy, basically. Um, and so you, you can see the connection between those two. And then we had the Six of Wands, which is going in kind of a shared direction with one another, uh, uh, and, the, and Temperance and, and the Chariot. So again, you know, we're talking about balance. Sixes are about balance and harmony. Um, and I think that the Chariot, the Chariot is also, it's the seventh card of the Major Arcana, and Temperance is the 14th. And so you saw the balance achieved knowing when to take the reins and when to to actually assert yourself with the chariot and then maximized or doubled uh, with the effect of temperance which is to do so in moderation um and and so basically when you're talking about moderation you're talking about balancing will with emotion so i think uh, ideally in order to achieve joy and all of that on monday anyway we really were thinking then about balancing the ego with the emotional side of self and uh, uh, in a way that that is eloquent and produce and, and fosters harmony with others instead of, you know, the opposite. So anyway, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me, Fehu, the first rune of the Elder Futhark. It's it means cattle or wealth. It's also considered the sending rune for uh um if you're if you're working a spell for example you can chant fehu to cast the intention um but it's basically sending that type of of, of willful energy uh out into the uh, to manifest something and typically you know it's talking about wealth and success so let's see what our our geomancy rune though is for the day oh well we have caput draconis let me get that out for you this is Caput Draconis. And the Draconi, both Caput and Kata. Caput represents the north node of the moon or the future. Uh, and then Kata would, would represent the south node of the moon or the past or karma. So basically we're manifesting some new intentions for the future today. Uh, and, and, and if we, you know, maybe we are doing that because we came into balance, you know, with our will and emotion, maybe we're able to then you know, manifest something from that whole experience. But we'll see. We'll see if we just need to reinforce it with the cards or if we're truly headed in a different direction based on the work we've been doing, you know, for the last few days. So let's go ahead and shuffle a little bit. I'm going to take a little drink of tea too here in a second. So I finished the monthly tarot for February. That's up on the blog. <clears throat> let's see. Um, I think I cross-posted it maybe over on Medium, but I don't remember. Maybe I did. I used the Heindel deck. I really like that deck. You know, the major cards have runes on them. He doesn't use the same Elder Futhark I do, but, but you can figure out what he's talking about anyway. Um, there's just different versions of it. You've also, also got the Younger Futhark. You've got the Icelandic Futhark. There's all different ones, you know. There's a Pictish language. There's there's all kinds of stuff, you know, that you can look at if you're into divination and the, using the different languages that are out there. But 
but I like the one I have, and uh, although I've started uh, uh, looking at the Younger Futhark as well. But I use this one in Rune Magic, and, and uh, uh, but he has a little bit different one, and uh, I don't know which one it is. I, there's some of the, some of the glyphs he uses. I I you know I'm on all of the information I have. I can't find exactly the one he's using, so I'm not sure. But he also has Hebrew glyphs on on the major cards and on the minor cards. He has uh, the I Ching hexagrams and uh, and that's very cool. Oh, and on the and on the major cards, there's also the astrological glyphs. So you've got a lot of information besides the tarot cards themselves, which are just gorgeous, by the way. It's a non-traditional deck. But I just think that it's rich with culture and heritage and tradition. And I, I don't know. I just think he did a, an outstanding job on that deck. And I really like it. So that's what I used for February. <clears throat> My other favorite deck is the Toth Tarot. Now that's a real departure. But, you know, I don't know. It just evokes the empath in me or something. And I get the feeling out of all of it. It's just, it's just a very cool deck. It's really my all-time favorite. Believe it or not. Even though I use the Rider Waite here. I, I, and I do love the Rider, Rider Waite deck. It's, it's you know... I just, I just kind of like the non-traditional ones. The more pagan decks and, you know... There's one by Chris Kranz. I think her name is Chris Kranz. She's out of Portland. And uh, uh, is it The Wild Unknown? Is that the name of it? Something like that. I think it's The Wild Unknown, maybe. I'm not sure. I, have to, I, have to, I haven't looked at it in a while. But it's it's just an incredible deck. If you haven't seen it, um, just look for it. It's it's all... Uh, it's pen and ink. Based. It's, it's, it's like black and white with a little bit of uh, color to it when she's talking about the elements. Uh, but she uses animals and whatnot to express herself on the cards. It's just, they're just, it's just very cool. It's just a very cool deck. So anyway, lots of ones to take a look at, but right now we're going to, we're going to take a look at the Rider weight for today. So let's go ahead and take our, our first three cards. If we need more, we'll take them, but if not, we'll, we'll stop with that and compare it to the runes and see what we have for today. Cards are all upside down today, and no, I don't do reversals. I think you should just look at the whole card and not worry about that. Well, <clears throat> all right, we have the, and I see the pattern we're going to use here. <coughs> well, I mean one we can use if we want to. Let me take some tea here, though. Because my throat's not doing all that well this morning. Anyway... We have one Major Arcana card, the Wheel of Fortune. That's the 10, the 10th card of the Major Arcana. We also have the 10 of Wands and then the 5 of Wands. So we have some interesting numerological patterns here. We have uh, the 5 maximized by the 10. So five, 5 and 5 is 10, so it doubles it. Just like we had that same sort of experience on Monday with uh, Chariot and, and, and Temperance. Chariot being the 7th card and Temperance being the 14th card. So you see the, the magnification there. Um, but right now let's just take a look. We can also take a look at the five being the center point, but we typically, I usually use the, the, uh, uh, wheel. I usually use a major card for that if I have one, but I don't know. I kind of like this balance here. Um, but we'll just see, we'll just, we'll just read it the way I pulled it and we'll see how it goes. And if we need to move things around, we will. But here we have the, the 10 of, uh, of wands, we see a man headed toward possibly his home. You see a line of demarcation here that goes across. That's in some of the tarot cards in the Rider Waite, not all. But you see his home over here in the distance. He's carrying a heavy burden. But there's an element here because he's not looking where he's going. You know, in a sense, he's leaning into the future, but he's also doing so in, 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 in perfect trust. He's trusting the process. He's, he's gathered up all of his will into and or his creative expression, if you want to call it that. And it's almost as if he's heading off to, uh, to secure his future. Let's see if there's anything else that I'm missing here. Commitment, struggle, determination limited awareness or vision 
sometimes this card is is interpreted in a negative way and although I think you can I I, I typically don't I, I just feel like even though you've got many burdens you're trusting the process because you've gathered your will together you know where you're going and you don't really need to you can just trust that you're on the path basically toward building something new or creating something new. The 10 reduces to one and that's new beginnings and wholeness and unity. It's leadership. So although you can you can definitely interpret it as a struggle and limited vision and all of that, uh, when you are putting it in, 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 in context of Monday's reading, I don't think so. Um, here we have the five the five of wands again wands is the fire element or our will or creative spark within the genesis of life and here you have just some playful struggle going on here this is not something that is uh uh, it's kind of, you know, five is about protection. It's about freedom versus restriction. It's, 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 uh, uh all of the elements plus spirit, but it's really, it's, if, if you think about it, because nobody's hitting one another, this really isn't a, a, a harsh card. Everybody's expressing their own opinion, their own, their own level of creativity, their own will. And out of the, and out of that mishmash of all of that, something truly wonderful can take place. Uh, maybe he's bringing some of these for them to do that with. I don't know, but it's almost like we need to put the five first that out of the creative struggle, out of the different expressions of will, little competition maybe, but we're going to have some gain with it. Their five is about change as well. And here's what he's gained perhaps. Or we could say that through creative struggle, this is the foundation for gathering his will together and moving on in, in trust that he's got everything he needs right there to create something new. Maybe he's going to, you know, expand his home, you know, maybe, maybe his wife is pregnant again or whatever, or for the first time. And, and maybe he's going to add on to the home for the, for the new child. I mean, it could be anything there that he's getting ready to create, but he's gathered it all together for something new. Could it be based on this, on the creative struggle that took place? And out of which change happened and now we can begin anew and when we do i mean gosh maybe we even need to begin with the wheel of fortune as the wheel turns this is a very hermetic card you see the hermetic uh, uh symbols for the four elements in each corner you see the symbols for mercury sulfur and salt surrounding the wheel You see the different glyphs on there, the different astrological glyphs, and you see the word tarot. You see some, you also see some Hebrew glyphs on there as well. But basically with the idea of new beginnings, this is the idea that something is ended. And so you see the turning of the wheel. And in terms of the wheel of fortune, sometimes fortune's up, sometimes it's down. You know, it just depends on, on, on what's gone on in the turning of the wheel. But the idea is that it, it, it signals new fortune in a way, or the ending of a period and uh, the beginning of another one here. But it's fortune, prosperity, it's cycles, it's movement, it's success, it suggests motion, beginnings and endings. And here, again, <clears throat> we're on, as the wheel turns, perhaps... It's given us something to think about and something to create, something new on the horizon. The wheel is turned and now here we're, we're here having, you know, in the group setting, if you think about this, say at work or something, you know, you could have, you could have the businesses had some success uh, 
or or maybe it's not it hasn't whatever has happened has happened with the wheel of fortune because it can go either way right and now it's time for some changes to take place and create a new path together let the expression of will be had let everybody say what they think whatever they feel whatever they want to do Because really this is I want, no, I want, no, I want, no, I want, no, I want. It's five five I wants basically here. But out of that discussion, out of that creative discussion, something really wonderful can happen. And maybe we begin again. This time with our will in balance. With our will gathered together. With what we want. Maybe representative of the group. Maybe it isn't just simply what he wants. And maybe they've made the decision that they need to make out of the playful struggle. And the I want conversation that they that, that you need to have. In other words, <clears throat> you can look at this as a planning session, in a way. To, to invoke some change from whatever the outcome of the turning of the wheel was. Because now we're going to begin anew. We're going to talk about what that looks like and make whatever changes we need to make. And then we're going to gather that will together. We don't know if there's people behind him. Maybe the other four guys are behind him out of the scene here. We don't know that. But maybe maybe he's gathering all, all together to go off from, and, and because here's your line of demarcation, like this is now and this is in the future in a way. So maybe whatever they've discussed here, whatever they've determined they want to do, whatever path forward. He's just gathered it all together. He's trusting the process and he's going to go make it happen for the collective. Because I think if you look very closely at this card, let me take a look here. The house looks big enough that it, it looks like it could be part of a community instead of just just an individual's home. But it looks like here you have the, uh, looks like here you might even have a field, maybe a pasture that they've planted, maybe. So if you want to look at it, then that, that's the beauty of tarot. You really, you can look at these cards individually, and so they could have one meeting, but collectively, in terms of the pattern you know if you and if you trace this back to monday if we're balancing will with emotion through spirit spirit eloquence maybe we've remembered that and that's why they're not bashing each other over the heads to force their own opinion their own will what they want is more important than other people here it's just they're just expressing themselves here this is what i want each one of us so who knows? We don't know what the outcome was. We just know that the will got gathered together. And even though, yeah, his vision is limited, maybe he doesn't need it to be, he doesn't need to see where he's going because he already knows. He has it well in hand, in other words, as he begins anew. So I think basically... You know, and with Fehu, I mean, we already know with, with Capit Draconis that we have the will to move on into the future. And we already know that it has to deal with wealth, with Fehu. So signaling as the wheel turns, it's either going to prepare us for the future one way or the other, either to give us the money to do it, or it's going to suggest, well, maybe that didn't work out. Maybe you need to make some changes irrespective of and see and we don't even need to know what that is realistically it could be whatever whatever is working out in your life however this happens to apply it's suggesting that the wheel is turned now it gives the opportunity for something else to come into play with the five and then we can move forward in trust with everything in order gather together trusting the process as we begin anew and and you know we've we've done this based on what we learned on monday of of not getting the emotion and because if the emotion was out of sync with the will this wouldn't look that way would it 
So the spirit eloquence with Ansu's and then the joy, the resulting joy from Laetitia basically gives us the basis then for all of this process here to happen. If we've balanced the will with emotion, balanced our, you know, overreaction on either end of the spectrum, basically, it then allows us to think and to plan and to manage and to analyze, right? As we determine our path forward, there's the earth element with the path, the strategy and the, all of that, that's the air element. So that's bringing all elements together in the wheel of fortune. Well, that's interesting. So I think we're on a new path. I think that, that that's pretty evident. Uh, I think that, again, you know, with the fire element, what always comes to mind with me is who do I want to be? You know, do, in other words, where is my vision placed? Is it placed on the ego and, and simply about some service to self or what I want all of the time? Or do I have the ability to see beyond just my own needs and to the collective needs and to see what do we really, what, what really needs to happen? Can I do something for myself here solely and, and have that be fine? Or, or do I need to really be thinking about the impact of that on other people and what's going to be best for everybody going forward? You know, if it's just an individual that's involved, then sure, think about what's best for you. But all too often, if we have a family, you know, we're at work, whatever, there is a collective sense around us. And sometimes we have to do what's best for the group. And I think that right now we're seeing a shift in that type of thinking to where it, it's not just about what's best for the group, but it's, it's, it's what, are we going to go forward in ego like people did at the Capitol on January 6th? Or are we going to go forward in spirit where we can take a look at the type of ideals that we have? You know, um, the idea of the, of the United States of America. Well, you know, that's unity through diversity for sure, but it's unity. And we've lost that, that connection uh, over the last few years, it's really that whole us versus them experience has really, really come into focus. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy toward, I mean, I mean, I mean, even just in the, in, in, uh, uh, if you're just looking at whether or not someone's going to wear a mask or not, they make the choice not to, well, that's not healthy for the group. And so for right now, you know, if you're looking at it in terms of a service to self approach, well, you're going to stand firm. I don't have to do that. I can bring a gun into the Capitol. No, it's a federal building. It's illegal. I, I don't know. You know, I was watching a deal, a, a news thing and, and a FBI, a former FBI guys like, yeah, I, I couldn't take my gun. I have a, I'm, 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 I'm an FBI agent. I had to check my gun. I couldn't bring it in there. Why can they? They can't. So, so it's, 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 but it's, but it's no, me, 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 I'm going to do what I want, right? Well, you can express what you want, but there's still rules. <laughs> there's still an, oh, there's still a, an underlying, you know, uh, foundation that we all have to live by in civilized society. Well, that foundation is now in a mess. It's like quicksand right now. And I think that that's, you know, again, you can, you can interpret this either way. We either did well or we didn't. <laughs> but either way, we learned something, right? If we're on the wrong path, if we're thinking wrongly, if we're, our perceptions don't serve us, if they don't serve the greater good, then it's time to then rethink all of that. I think this is the rethinking thing. It's going to be lively. People are going to say, well, no, I think this. And someone else will say, well, no, I think this. Somewhere out of there and understanding forms. And I think this is our understanding. We go forward in unity into the future and we trust that process. We've made the decisions we need to make. We've made the changes we need to make. And now it's time to move on. It's not time for the weird conspiracies. And I get how those things happen. You know, you live in a dishonest world. You live with, and there's not a government out there that doesn't lie to their people. 
about one thing or another. And uh, so I understand how conspiracy theories get started. It's just that they're not helpful. You know, if it's true, then it's not a conspiracy theory. So the things that are being presented now on that vein are not true. And people have acted upon it in ways that have harmed the, the, the unified aspect here, the collective nature of who we are here. So I think that <clears throat> what we're saying here this week in terms of the readings is that it's time to balance our will with emotion so that we can not hang on so tightly <clears throat> to our beliefs, that we can look objectively at them and through disparate voices maybe arrive at what the real truth is. And then we can move on together on a shared path, our will in unison, collected together, trusting the process. So I guess that's it. Something to think about till uh, next Monday. Anyway, did I say I did I say I published the tarot? I don't know if I did. I thought about it, but I might be I didn't say it. I don't know if I didn't. I published the February tarot. I did. I did because I talked about the Handel deck. That's that's right. I talked about that. So so yeah, I did talk about that. So that's over on the blog. Um, you can go look at it there. It, might, it also might be again on Medium. I don't know. Um, I think I did that, and because um, I'll cross post stuff I do over onto Medium as well as just write stuff over on Medium. So. Uh, so I kind of write in more than one place. There's also the Patreon page if you want to follow me over there. Uh, it's a dollar a month to do that. Um, so I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else. Uh, we'll get together on Sunday for Esoteric Influences. The write-up of it will also go up on the blog. Uh, another version will go up over on Patreon uh, of it. Um, and I guess that's it. Watch for the... Uh, 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 magical forecast to come out. I'll, I'll put that out here today as well. Another version again goes up over on Patreon. It's got more magical correspondences in it than direct ones for the day than, than what the, uh, the uh, uh, one on the blog has. Um, I think that's it. So thanks so much for watching and uh, have a good weekend. You know, and if you go out around anyone at all, uh, uh, wear a mask. I don't care if you're inside or out. Have a mask on if you're talking to other people. If you're around them, please put a mask on. In fact, they're recommending to, uh, to double up now with the new variant. It's, I guess, more contagious or something. Uh, they're saying so depending on where you live. You know, it may not be in your particular area yet, but it likely will be at some point. Um, so we've switched to uh, uh, disposable KN95s, which is not as good as N95s, but they're five layer. And some of them have been, have been approved for emergency use by, by what, the FDA or something, whoever it is that does that. Um, and so there's, you can see when you go online to order them or whatever, which ones are, are approved. But, but you, I, we got those and then we got a, a three-ply uh, uh, surgical mask to go over it. Um, so there's basically then eight layers, uh, and between that and our face shields, I, I, I think we're doing all that we can until we can get the vaccines, So because neither of us have had them yet. So anyhow, um, just stay safe and just be aware, uh, be alert, and uh, if things get dicey, just leave. It, it's not worth your health. If, you're, if people in the stores are not you know, staying safe and the stores aren't making them do so well, then you have to take that into consideration, I guess. And if you need to go home at that point and come back later, well, that's what you need to do. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, don't stand on ceremony. Don't make it about, well, I have a right to be here because the only thing you need to be worrying about now is to not get the virus and, and not transmit it if you do. <laughs> so it, it's really, we need to stop this in its tracks and, uh, uh, and give, it, give it no room to move anywhere. So I guess that's it, and uh, have a good weekend. And again, I hope you come back on Sunday for Esoteric Influences. And uh, be good to yourself, be good to one another, and blessed be.